live from Barcelona, Spain, it's theCUBE, covering Cisco Live 2020. Brought to you by Cisco and its ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back live to Cisco Live in 2020 in Barcelona. We're in Europe, Barcelona, I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. We've got a great guest here, and the whole theme of the show is not about the infrastructure, it's about the applications, and the applications being powered by an infrastructure powered by Cisco. We've got a great guest, Senior Vice President, General Manager Team Collaboration, Sri Srivasan uh, of Cisco. You're running all the big products, WebEx, on steroids, new announcements. You had a really killer announcement, the PACT booth. We'll get into that. Welcome to theCUBE, thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. All right, so what's the quick news? You're on stage giving the keynote. Mm -hmm. Quickly share the news so we can get into it. So, we're obviously coming out with a set of updates to our great portfolio. We reach out to about 300 million users across the enterprise today who use us for all the way from meetings to team collaboration to calling to powering meeting rooms. So in a sense, what we have as a product set uh, is either in the meeting room or on the desktop or on a mobile phone. So any one of those uh, methods and mechanisms. And in the past couple of years, we've seen mass adoption of video, uh, whether it be on a mobile phone, uh, whether it be in your desktop or uh, in a meeting room itself. So right? video is the key. You had an announcement Correct. with, micro, with uh, Microsoft Teams. Yes. Explain that, because don't, th they, don't they compete with you? Yes, we, we, so the best way to describe it is, is uh, it's compatibility and competition. So it's compatible and compete. Um, for the sake of our end users. So end user choice yeah. pretty much drives uh, the types of integrations we do these days. You can't leave it to an IT organization to do that integration. You've got to make sure these products work. So we integrate quite a bit with our competitors, Spar uh, Slack, Microsoft Teams, Zoom. We do integrate with all of those guys. And the Microsoft Teams integration um, is prefaced on providing the best real-time media experience into the Microsoft ecosystem. So if a customer is using Office 365 for document collaboration and chooses us for real-time collaboration, they get the best experience possible. So this has been a sleepy space for a while. And then all of a sudden, you mentioned Slack, Zoom comes out, big IPOs, mm -hmm. high valuations, Microsoft you know, kind of transitioning its, its base to, to Teams. There's a lot of excitement all of a sudden. Yep. And I was thinking in the last year, well, geez, I wonder if, if Cisco's asleep at the wheel, but today you had all these announcements, so obviously not asleep at the wheel. Describe mm -hmm. what you see going on in the space and what mm -hmm. excites you from the standpoint of what you just announced. Yeah, so I think over the past two years, rightfully so, there's been a ton of movement in the space. And I think it's driven by, it's, it's important to talk about why. Uh, it's driven by, uh, globalization of the workforce. Um, so that globalization of the workforce has caught, has, has, uh, has caught, caught steam in the past few years. And you pretty much see folks being employed across the globe. Whoever has the skill gets employed, in a sense. And what we see within the confines of WebEx is an increase in user engagement. So the same user is using WebEx a lot more. Mm -hmm. And we, we wonder why and we're seeing basically cross time zone meetings go up. And team collaboration, as we know it, is no longer across the table, it's actually across time zones, across ge uh, yeah. geographies, across language boundaries. So you're seeing that happen, and the power of team collaboration is not just bringing people together, it's the data inherent within. The conversation becomes the new currency, it's the new frontier. And you can do a whole bunch of analytics on that. You can provide information on that. You can basically bring what I would call uninterrupted work streams in the midst, which is, you know, how do you take a conversation, take a, a, a set of action items out of it, and basically take it all the way so that yeah. there is automation, there is least amount of transmission loss, a transmission loss in a sense. So that's mm -hmm. uh, that's what's causing um, this this industry to wake up because it's a productivity gain yeah. in knowledge worker population. Yeah, the I, ROI is off the charts on these systems. Yep. They're a low denominator and it's so easy to justify. Yeah, I mean, to me, this is the biggest wave that um, people are kind of talking about, but not really specifically addressing it. And you know, to me, I always like to look at the startup world, because the startup world is ultimately the canary in the coal mine. Totally. Cloud native was before cloud hit, the startups were in there, you know, white, clean sheet of paper, all cloud, now that's mainstream. I had a conversation with Mitchell, the founder of HashiCorp, and we were talking about the concept of virtual first. 
Mm -hmm. And his startup was all virtual. They didn't have an office. They couldn't afford one. And, but their teams were remote. This is mm -hmm. the new dynamic. They GitLab, work. same thing, right? And so I believe that this is going to be an enterprise requirement because this has been validated. You're seeing people work virtually. Development teams, marketing teams, any team, they're mm -hmm. remote, they're at home. So this is a trend, this is real. Yeah. And, and designing a product for virtual first mm -hmm. versus saying, oh, if you're virtual, use this product that was designed for this. Mm -hmm. This is really where it's coming to, in my totally. opinion. How are you guys addressing that? Because in that video is not easy. Totally not. You guys have been doing video at Cisco for a long time. I know from the cable companies to making deep packet inspections and mm -hmm. managing packets. Yep. QoS, I mean policy based. This is mm -hmm. a perfect storm for making video work better. Yep. So, you, so explain the whole virtual first and the video innovation. So I'll, I'll start by sharing a small little secret. I run this business and yet I'm a remote worker. Cisco is based in San Jose, I live in Seattle. Uh, I live in a small town called Sammamish, and I'm, I'm a perfect example of who we're building for. You have good bandwidth there? Oh, absolutely, <laughs> we have good bandwidth. It's all about the bandwidth. <laughs> so, so without a doubt, what has also spurred this is the better bandwidth across the globe, not just in the US. Uh, I find that you know, parts of Asia have very good connectivity. If you go into Korea, Singapore, yeah. it's just fantastic, right? Uh, yeah. If you go into the yeah. Western Europe, Scandinavian countries, it's just fabulous. So I think the, the fact of the matter is you, the act of working together across the table and the act of these collaboration tools bringing people together need to be the same. That's pretty much where we are all headed. We're all trying to achieve that nirvana of making sure there's no dissonance when you bring people uh, across video. That's key. That requires not only the ability to see and hear people, but to be able to whiteboard, to be able to have a very rich and immersive conversation on yeah. you know, co-creation. So that, you know, using like stickies on a whiteboard, yeah. for example, how, yeah. how well can you do it? So yeah. those are the types of things that we are headed towards. Uh, and I will, I will pretty much say, you guys said it in your question, you have to design for a remote worker, yeah. for a virtual work environment which basically is all about optimizing for team collaboration and optimizing for information that's consistent across different communication types. So whether you pick up the phone, whether you are on a meeting, in a persistent chat, all that transcription should look and feel the same. This is the convergence really of networking and software because Correct. you need software is where the action is, but the network controls the routes. Mm -hmm. so you know, I'll give you an example. We were doing a live broadcast in our studio in Palo Alto, had Ken Jennings on from Jeopardy, and it was, I was so excited, it was a good interview, we had multiple guests on, talking about AI, and you know, he was kind of our celebrity guest, and he had terrible bandwidth at his house. I don't know, maybe his kids were playing the games on it, or he was downloading some Netflix, who knows? But he had a horrible visual. Mm -hmm. We couldn't control that. Mm -hmm. This is where the network optimization comes in. What Correct. are you guys doing there? You guys run the networks, you guys have access to some of the routes and looking for you know, best so, route, best quality? So I, I think without a doubt, you know, the, your lowest common denominator leg in your network kind of decides the quality per se. Uh, but we, we continue to do things like uh, compression of bits on the wire so that you need the smallest amount of pipe. But at the end of the day for high res video, you still need a decent amount of bandwidth. And what ends up happening is it's not just bandwidth, it's uh, you know, understanding what kind of packet loss profile you have on that network and things like that. So what we're doing across nearly, nearly every vendor today is figuring out how we can optimize for these lossy networks. So if you talk to any collaboration engineer, um, the first interview question will inadvertently be, tell me your experience on lossy networks. What have you done? How many patterns do you have? You know, that's yeah, yeah. kind of the, the discussion per se. So I think without a doubt the advent of 5G and its expansion will lead to Ken Jennings potentially having a much better experience, right? Can you auto scale, um, not auto scale, but auto detect yes. uh, that, because that's something that could be automated, yeah, right? Yeah, we, we, we call it graceful degradation, so we start with aspiring for a 1080p, then we'll bring it down to 720, 360, and no video. And that happens automatically and we let the end user know you're having a network blip and hence uh, we, are, we are degrading it or 
product. And that's in today's product. It. Yes, today's product. So years ago, when you did video conferencing, you used to have to show up 15 minutes beforehand just to make sure everybody yes. can get on. Okay, <laughs> so simplicity is another <laughs> big adoption theme. Correct. Whether it's you know, one push phone calling or call me or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you've got to add functionality. You've added transcription, you've added translation, you've got the split screen. Yep. Uh, when I stand up, the camera follows me. So are those counterpoise, simplicity and functionality? Or how do you integrate mm -hmm. those together? I think the, the, all of this is down in the quest of simplicity, right? Um, one of the key things we've done across the Cisco WebEx portfolio, we've been known as the stodgy characters, for, um, you know, guys who don't move fast, which is exactly the opposite. To be honest with you, we worked on making sure we get rid of, I'm going to use the word here, nerd norms in the product. Optimize for the simple. In a meeting, there are three things that matter, three big use cases, scheduling, joining, in meeting quality. Those are the only three things that matter. Mm -hmm. The rest doesn't matter, right? So if you look at our devices, if you look at everything, we have this consistent green button that shows up everywhere. Whether you bring up Outlook, whether you bring up an iPhone calendar, yeah. whether you bring up a desktop in one of our devices, all of those things will have this consistent green button. We, don't, we never want the end user to miss it. See it, hit it. Mm -hmm. It'll show up at the right time. Basically shows up between six minutes and the four minute mark before a meeting. And by that in meeting, quality, you mean the experience overall. Ex ah, how hard it is yeah. to share something. Or, how know, actually, can you see that person? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, can you hear that person? Yeah, yeah. You know, things of that sort, mm -hmm. right? You know, how do you avoid echoes in a meeting? Like, what if I turn on both uh, audio multiple times in right, a, in right, a particular right, right. You, you I was the mentioning, echo, right? I was mm -hmm. mentioning in our last interview, Shri, about um, uh, the, the previous guests around, they want APIs, customers would like APIs. Mm -hmm. There's kind of a trend towards a thin, I won't say thin client, because that's mm -hmm. kind of an old, old word, but um, more efficient source code on the client side, not bloated software in the sense of having all these bells and whistles. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I mean, at some point, yeah, how many features are you going to use, yeah. right? Like, mm -hmm. uh, or there could be an advanced version, maybe you have a tiered thing, but you know, at the base set, how do you create software in this modern era mm -hmm. so that you can have really fast software mm -hmm. managing the front end with the powerful back end? You think about it, hey Siri, you know, there's a front end, there's a back end, so you're starting to see this kind of decoupling. How do you mm -hmm. guys look at that? Has it changed the development thesis? Is that something you guys are thinking about? What's yeah. your take on all so, that? So, without a doubt, right? So we, we, we constantly optimize, media is a very different workload than, for example, a commanding tool, right? Yeah. Uh, and I don't mean to trivialize Siri or any other assistant. Yeah, yeah. media's hard. <laughs> uh, when you're doing video, the app needs to have some intelligence to be able to disambiguate audio and video streams and content sharing, right? Yeah. So these apps tend to have a bigger footprint on the desktop, on the mobile phone, than other traditional apps. So there is a constant quest for that additional yeah. bit of optimization yeah. to reduce, you know, uh, substantially reduce the juice you use out of the laptop. Yeah. Right? Uh, and with laptops becoming more and more powerful, mobile phones becoming more and more powerful, yeah. we're only able to bring more, more into that big three use cases. And the rich media video. is only yeah. getting more and more robust with video. Look at Correct. the gaming world. Correct. My kids got their rigs set up, multiple monitors. I mean, it's a lifestyle experience, the consumption yep. of video. Totally. It's only going to put more pressure on you guys. Correct. It's hard, mm -hmm. we know, we do it. How, yeah. What's the, in your mind, what's your guiding principle for future innovation, whether you're hiring, designing around video? Mm -hmm. What are you guys chasing that nirvana? What yeah. is it, is it the software, is it the hardware, is it chips? I think it's, it's a combination of them, right? If you look at Cisco, our inherent differentiation is we know, we know how to do software, we know a thing or two about networks, and we know hardware. How do you bring these three together? And there's a fourth dimension, I'm going to call it quad, and it's security. You can't ignore, so security, you know, it's, it's something you have to intrinsically think about. It's not yeah. a check for a checkbox after. You don't want somebody, yeah. you know, peeping toms in your meeting, for example, they're very simple, right? Hacking the cams, Jeff Bezos has got hacked on a video on his WhatsApp. Yeah. Embedded malware, so all kinds of weird things Correct. that could come through, you don't so know. So, I think it's, it's, it's the amalgamation of all of these things. How do you maximize every single uh, element of the pipe um, so we are working with, for example, our own DNA center methods and mechanisms by which we're saying, based on our workload, how do we optimize the network for our workload? 
when we find an issue within, let's say, WebEx, how do we automatically self-heal the network? That is basically where we are headed. So yeah. we want to make sure we are constantly up and down the stack, up and yes, down the up stack. Up and down the stack. And the other, yeah. you know, you talked about simplicity of use case. I'll give you an example. What we're doing with our devices now is that it's, it has face recognition. We don't store any, any images in the cloud. So as soon as you walk into a meeting room, we've got an IoT sensor there. It recognizes your face. It says, hey, let me pull up your meetings. It starts to track who all have joined your meeting and then let's assume you forget to join the meeting, it wakes up and it says, would you like to join the meeting? Two of, two nice. of your colleagues have joined. Yeah. So you don't even have to hit the button. It is germophobe yeah. friendly. Mm -hmm. So you don't have yeah. to touch Remind anything. You. It just yeah, that's great. reminds you and basically yeah, you More automation. So that level of automation is coming in. So you talk about the future. The future is about simplicity that spans generations. So you pretty much want the human to come back and for the tech to fade away in the background. Right? Mm -hmm. You don't want them yes. to be reliant on this app that you have to learn. Right? It should be discernible, relatable, easy to use. Right? Works like the movies. Kind of. <laughs> Shri, you're a rock star and great to have you. In fact, now we know you live in Seattle, we're going to have you in our studio remotely and we're going to make sure that bandwidth and that video is of highest quality. Shri is the SVP, Senior Vice President, General Manager of the Collaboration Group of Cisco. Big part of the future of Cisco, this group is going to be really driving some of those network benefits. The applications are a big part of the focus, changing the business models, business outcomes. This is the conversation, this is theCUBE coverage from Barcelona. We'll be right back after this short break.